Now let us talk about IEEE standards for softwares. Now these are all the IEEE standards which I have listed out and right from software quality assurance plan to testing to unit testing to software reviews and uh, case tools all are there and uh, if you are talking about uh, software life cycle processes or maybe software project management plans and even glossary is there then you have uh, IEEE recommended practice for architectural description of software intensive system and this P9003 this is software and system engineering guidelines for the application of ISO 9001-2000 to the computer software so ISO 9001-2000 this IEEE talks about this also how to implement it or what are the uh, guidelines for using it for computer software so these are the classes of IEEE standards. There are uh, first of all the conceptual standards that is for guiding principles and overall approach. We have IEEE 1061. This is for software quality metrics methodology. And then uh, very important one IEEE EIA 12207.0. This is IT information technology software life cycle processes. Then we have a perspective um, a prescriptive uh, standards for uh, conformance that is requirement to which a software developer must conform that is IEEE 829 for software test documentation IEEE 1012 for software validity, uh, validation and verification and 1028 for software reviews so we are going to see a few of them and then we have this guidance standards implementation of class B standard that is IEEE 1233 this is guide for developing system requirement um, you know specification SRS and uh, then we have uh, IEEE EIA 12207 .1. here we so you uh, have seen this is to be zero this is point one this is guide information technology for software life cycle processes life cycle data so you know there are uh, in majority three type of uh, classes or you, you can say classes of IEEE standards conceptual standards and prescriptive standards of conformance and then guidance standards so we'll see uh, IEEE 8330 uh, that is system requirement specification or we call it as SRS so why we are specifying the specification for example uh, two persons talking he says uh, your requirements document is the biggest I have ever seen now it's too big to read but uh, I can guess from its weight what must be in there now this uh, other person say you know it's multi-user global system right I'm not getting that so what does it mean we have to have a very good specification for example if we have for example just take a switch lever if it is moved down uh, then within 0.1 second the lamp should illuminate and if it is moved up then within 0.2 seconds lamps goes out so this is the specification which you need to give that for lamp for switch lever what are the inputs what are the output what are the typing uh, timing relationship what are the casual relationship and the appearance and the length and width and everything uh, as far as the specification are concerned for that we have this IEEE 8301998 uh, standards uh, these are all the you can say the headings of the standard for example we have title table of contents and then in this introduction you have this purpose scope definition acronyms abbreviation references overview and they does exactly what is being said here this purpose describe purpose of this SRS describe intended audience the scope identify the software product and enumerate what the system will and will not do this is a definition acronym and abbreviation they define that vocal uh, vocabulary of the SRS references again references um, uh, all the references then overview describing the content of the rest of the SRS and describing how the SRS is organized the section 2 going to overall description as the name suggests same thing which has been given that is what is product perspective that this presents the business case 
and the operational concept of the system it describes how the opposed system fits into the uh, business context it describes external interfaces like system uh, user hardware software communication and while this uh, you know this particular uh, points they highlights that the name they suggest for example let us go to this constraint part it says describe other country uh, it uh, describes the constraint that will limit developers options that is regulatory pol policies target platform database network software and protocols development uh, standard requirement so all these uh, are there and uh, now uh, we are coming to the specific requirements uh, all those specific to the software so this specifies software requirements in sufficient detail to enable designers to design a system to satisfy those requirements and testers to verify requirements state and also state requirements that are externally perceivable or viewable by users operators or externally connected systems a requirement should include uh, at a minimum a description of every input into the system and every output from the system and all function performed by the system in response to an input or in support of an output then we come to the specific requirements each of them we can talk about these have been uh, you know highlighted here for example uh, say logical database requirement so this includes a type of information used the data entities and their relationship and if object oriented model is used this is the main uh, the main body of requirement which is organized in a variety of possible ways for example architecture specification class diagram state and collaboration diagrams and activity diagrams then uh, let us talk about ieee 829 we have already talked about 830 this is uh, you know system srs system requirement specification now ieee 829 uh, this is software testing this is uh, why we have this ieee 829 standard test plan why we have it keeps track of possible tests that will be run on the system after coding to identify the test item feature to be tested testing task who will do each task and so on and the ieee 829 test plan outline it gives test plan identifier that is some type of unique com company generated uh, number to identify this test plan then we have introduction then we have uh, test plans and then we have features to be tested and features not to be tested a testing approach item pass or fail criteria the suspension criteria and resumption certificate uh, requirements then also what will be the test deliverables the environmental needs and responsibility that is who is going to be the in charge staffing and training needs schedule risk and contingencies and approvals and references approvals means who can approve the process as complete and allow the product or uh, project to uh, proceed to the next level so these are test plan uh, related documents we have this is test design specification tds this is test case specification tcs and this is test procedure specification tps so let us uh, conclude by discussing about iso ic 12207 ieee eia 12207 no these two are well confused you know Uh, standards in software field so let me explain them first of all iso iec 12207 this was published by 1995 this is called as uh, or for this is for information technology software life cycle processes this was published in 1995 by international organization of standardization international organization of standardization and iec iec stands for international electro technical communication now uh, this provides common framework for developing and managing software but now this is included inside ieee eia 12207 software life cycle processes this was published in 1998 by institute of electrical and electronic engineers and electronic industry uh, association yeah, that is for ieee eia and this includes iso iec 12207 in its entirety right so it adds along with this clarification concepts and guidelines to foster better understanding in application so hope you got a bit idea about ieee uh, standards for software there are 
for everything there are standards available uh, specifically we talked about 830 and 829 830 uh, for requirement and 829 for testing thank you so much take care of yourself